All right, yeah. So now, now this is the main thing right here, man. This, this, this the main subject right here, man. Uh, marriage is no cure for fornication. Now, the Bible in in First Corinthians seven is said to avoid fornication and let each man have his own wife. But he talking about the person that God appointed you to be with. The, the 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 special person that you feel like God has appointed y'all to be together. Okay, don't just be together, get married. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If you think you you if you think you found the person that God would have you to be with and you feel you feel like it's God and they feel like it's God and you feel like God brought y'all together. Well, he don't want y'all to just be together and be having sex. He wants y'all to be married. But you don't just marry somebody because you because you you trying to overcome fornication. You you not really sure that's the right one. You not really convinced that's the right one. But you just finna go on and get married because you don't want to be fornicating. I, I've been in that situation. I got a story too. I'm finna, I, you know I got to get into it. I'm, I'm going to cut it off. It ain't going to go no more than two hours. Some of them other subjects I might not get to. But, um, but yeah, 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 yeah. He, he's not saying, he said, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. He's not saying just jump and marry somebody so you don't fornicate. But he's saying if you think you found your life partner, male and female, <laughs> nowadays, you okay. But if you if you feel like you found born male, and born female that okay but if you if you feel like you found your life partner then don't just be together get married make it official to avoid fornication but he's not saying just marry somebody to overcome the sin of fornication it, it, it had to be god it needs to be god ordained what god have put together let not man put asunder okay but anyway Marriage is no cure for fornication. That's point one. Uh Uh-oh. Here go point two. This is it right here. And then he gave me a lot of revelation about marriage just to show, like, sometimes when you single, you know, you think marriage is just, you you might think marriage is easy breezy because just like they say, uh, the grass always look greener on the other side, but it's the side that you water. It's the side that you put the work in on. It's the side that you take care of that's going to be the greener side. But the grass always look green on the other side. But anyway, power is required for abstinence. You not finna live an abstinent life, not full of lust, not masturbating, not fornicating. You not finna live that kind of life without power. You got to be plugged in the God. You got to be plugged in the God. You got to be wrapped up, tied up in Jesus, fully connected to live that kind of life. It's possible, though. It's very possible. I I done it for some time and was really locked in God. You know what I mean? But it's it's very deliberate, very intentional. You got to be really serious about your time with God. But then again, the, the 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 opposition is serious. You know what I mean? They serious about controlling the world, and you know what I mean, and having their hand in everything, and 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 trying to you know block out the Christians and war against the Christians, and you know they serious, man. The devil is very serious in in his business. You know what I mean? I still stand on that though. He ain't gonna show up every day. You know what I mean? But. But he's serious about the, the system of the world. He's not going to visit people every day. You know what I mean? But he don't have to visit because he got the system. The system. He he, he got the world. The, the flesh, the world, and the devil all work together. You know what I mean? The flesh, the devil, and the world all work together. You know what I mean? So the way he got the system set up, he ain't got to show up every day. You know what I mean? But, uh... Yeah, man. Yeah. But uh but anyway. Okay, it's power required for that. You really got to be in God. You got to really have a real strong relationship with God to live that life free of lust and everything that come with it. 
Okay, but check this out. Check this out. We don't always look at it like this, though, because I've been in situations. Okay, let me let me say my point first, though. Power is required for marriage. Now, check this out. Now, this is what God gave me. This is what God gave me. <clears throat> if you don't have the power to live a successful single life, you really ain't got the power for a successful marriage. That, and that, that's for everybody who thinking marriage is a way. Marriage is not the way of escape from temptation. See, I, I had got that in my mind. First Corinthians 10, 13, he said, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, there's no temptation such as is common to man. You know what I'm saying? But God is faithful uh, who won't allow you to be tempted above what you can handle, above what you are able to bear, but will also with the temptation make a way of escape or make a way to escape. But marriage is not the way of escape from fornication and lust. Marriage is not the way of escape. You have to be able to bring your body into subjection and see the thing about, and this is why marriage ain't, see people, when you single and you trying to beat lust and beat fornication, marriage just look like, it just look like a way of escape. <clears throat> but, but you don't, you're not fully conscious of how hard marriage is and, and marriage is blessed, but you, it, it take a lot of work. And I, I've been, I, I, I've been married before, but this is what God gave me. And I know it's the word. I know it's the word because check it. When you, when you struggling with fornication and you trying to get into marriage, you're not really thinking about how, how hard marriage is. You know, you, you thinking about marriage is just like, it's something easy. But um, it ain't. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. And then it ain't just see marriage is two people. See when 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 you single, you just gotta you it, all you worried about is you. If you keep yourself right, you good. You just gotta focus on you. But when it's marriage, both of y'all got to be in power. See marriage to take two. So one per all it take is both of y'all ain't gotta fall off. It can just take one person to fall off. And, and, it, and it, it messes stuff up. But uh, let me read what's in my notes. Okay, power is required for abstinence. You got to stir up the spirit to crucify the flesh. You got to really be plugged in in God. But the same power is required for marriage. The same power that it takes to live a successful single life, the same power is required for marriage. Now, now, now God gave me some points. He just gave me three points. Now, the first thing about marriage, you have to reverence, respect, and please one another. When you married, it ain't just about pleasing yourself. You have to have a state of mind focused on pleasing your spouse, taking care of them, um, doing, doing your part. You have to have the state of mind that's focused on respecting, reverencing, and pleasing your spouse. It ain't just about pleasing you. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. L -l -l Let me go on to that. I'm going to kind of breeze through this because I'm really trying to stay on the move. But uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, man, verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the, the wife unto the husband. And then verse 32, or now nah, let me hit verse 28. Oh yeah, see verse 28. It says, it, but and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she have not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. But I spare you. Now I think uh, I think they were saying they they might have been talking about persecution or something. Uh, but the way I look at it, I'm, I'm gonna take it. I, I think I take it in a different way. You are gonna have trouble in the flesh. That just mean it ain't easy. You know what I mean? You are gonna have trouble in the flesh. 
You know what I mean? It's going to be some stuff you got to work out, some stuff you got to work through, some stuff you got to get past. Like, it ain't, it ain't no easy thing. But I think it was, uh, in the context, it might have been talking about persecution or something. You know what I mean? But, uh, okay, and then verse 32 through 34. But I would have you without carefulness, without being worried or preoccupied, He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. He comparing being single and being married. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Now, that that doesn't mean that if you're married, you don't care about God. That just means that one of your main focuses besides God is pleasing your wife. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that, you know, you can still be committed to God, but, but, but very high on the list right up under your commitment to God is, is, is your wife. So you not just focused on God, you focused on God, but, but a big part of your focus is on your wife, on your marriage. And that's how it's supposed to be. Okay. Verse 34. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world. Not the world like when the Bible say love, not the world, nor the things of the world. It's talking about earthly things, your earthly relationship. You know what I mean? Not not the world like the godless culture of society, but the world just earthly things. Your earthly relationship, your earthly family. You know what I mean? But it says, but she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. So so everything I'm 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 going to say is your state of mind in marriage is not just about pleasing yourself, it's not just about serving yourself. Your state of mind in marriage is uh, pleasing your spouse. That had to be your state of mind. And how many times have you been in a relationship or in marriage and things happen and that's no longer your state of mind? See, you really got to be in God to keep that state of mind and not develop because you can develop a selfish state of mind in marriage. Anybody that cheat on their spouse that was not your state of mind pleasing your your husband or your wife. That's why I say marriage is not easy. <laughs> you can be married but not have that state of mind to please your husband or please your wife. Marriage is not easy. This is the point that I'm saying. Just like being single and being abstinent ain't easy, being married ain't easy. Now, God can help you with either way. God can, if you really in God, you can have a blessed marriage. If you really in God, you can live a successful single life. But it really, you really got to be in God, whether you single or you married. That's the point. That's the point. You really got to be in God. And I'm not saying that when you married, you no longer care for the things of God. That's not true. But right along with your commitment to God, right up under that is your commitment to your spouse. You know, so it's a very heavy commitment right under your commitment to God. You know? Okay, so the point is, it's power. Power is required for marriage. And the first thing is keeping a, a, a state of mind where you reverence, respect, and seek to please your spouse. That's point one. And that ain't easy. Stuff can happen and you can lose that state. You can lose that attitude, lose that state of mind. Okay, point two is being on one accord, being in agreement. And if you're not in agreement at first, you got to come to an agreement. You and your wife have to negotiate to come because stuff can happen where the husband and the wife is not in agreement. But check this out. Amos chapter three, verse three. How can two walk together except they be agreed? And uh, and I read this last night. I said, OK, I'm going to throw that in there. OK, Acts chapter five, Ananias and Sapphira. Now, we know they was on some evil stuff, lying to God, 
lying to the Holy Ghost. But check this out, though. A husband and a wife got to be in agreement. <laughs> Even though they was doing wrong, they was in agreement, though. And I, it, it kind of jumped out to me, too. I ain't going to lie. Okay, check this out. He said, uh, okay, Ananias lied and he dropped down dead. And then, uh, and then Sapphira came in there, uh, verse nine, or I say verse eight. And Peter answered unto her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord or test the spirit of the Lord. Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. And she fell down dead. But the point is, now they were doing wrong, but the point is a husband and a wife got to be in agreement. Now, that's not always easy. You got to be on one accord you got to be in agreement. And if you not in agreement at first, you got to work something out and come to an agreement. See, that, that that's not always easy. That's not always easy. Matthew 12, 25, Mark 3, 24 and 25, Luke 11, 17, man, a house that is divided cannot stand. So you really got to be in God. Because if you're not in agreement and the husband just say, well, I'm the lead, this how it's going to be, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's not the best way of doing things. But I mean, you, you know, you got to talk it out. You got to talk it out. You got to come to an agreement. You know what I mean? Every person want to be heard, you know? The man want to say what he want to say. The woman should have some input, some influence. Now, at the end of the day, though, the man is the head. So, you know, at the end of the day, that man got to make a decision. And hopefully, even if the woman don't agree, she'll fall in line, hopefully. But, you know, you 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 get you got to have a respectful attitude towards one another. You got to be able to talk things out. You both got to be able to speak your mind, speak your, put your input on the table. And, and then you come to a conclusion, you know, you come to an agreement, but think about it. If you not really in Christ, y'all not really praying together. Y'all not really fellowshipping together. Y'all not really spending time with God, whether it's, uh, if you not spending time with God, period, or if you're not spending time with God together, like a husband and a wife, man, you, uh, you probably need to spend some time praying and reading on your own and then spend some time praying and reading together. That's look at how much work that is. But if you're not doing that, then how you going to always keep that respectful, reverent attitude to one toward one another? How you going to always be able to talk things out and negotiate, come to an agreement. You know what I mean? If, if you, if you're not really plugged in to the Lord like that, you're going to be disagreeing. You ain't going to be working it out. You ain't going to be coming to an agreement. I'm telling you, man, that, that's why marriage is so tough, man. It's a lot of work behind marriage, especially if you Christians, then the devil going to be, you know what I'm saying? Really fighting the marriage. Like you really got to be in Christ, not to mention the temptations, how other women might be trying to get at you. Other dudes be trying to just cut a fact y'all married and, you know, the enemy coming against it. I mean, you really got to be in Christ. That's the point I'm saying. It's the same type of mentality, just like being single. So the, the point I'm making is marriage is no easy escape from fornication. Anybody who got that in their mind, because I had that in my mind. Matter of fact, I, I left a church because, you know, me and this chick was engaged, but we fornicating. You know what I mean? So I'm like, man, I'm trying to get married. I'm trying to get out of I'm trying to get out of sin. Now, I knew I knew that she wasn't the right one. You know, I really didn't even. I really didn't even have feelings like that for her just because I didn't trust her. You know, she was uh, she was dishonest early in the relationship. 
And and she didn't come out and just say like, hey, I lied about this and that. Like stuff didn't add up. So I confronted her and she was still trying to be dishonest. But I just like, nah, nah, nah. You know what I mean? So I made her and I still don't think she fully came clean. I still don't think she fully came clean. But, you know, what I mean, she admitted to some of the dishonesty. But I still don't think she fully came clean. So I didn't trust her like that. So I, I knew she wasn't the one. You know, I knew she wasn't, you know what I mean? I knew, but but then again, I'm back, I'm I'm in a backslidden state. So if you if I'm not giving God my best, I'm not gonna insist on God's best for me. You know what I mean? Like if you're not giving God your best, it's it, how you gonna insist on God's best for you when you're not giving God your best. <laughs> so I'm fornicating, you know, and you know what I mean? Really backslid, low key. Not 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 a total backslide, but you know, I, I got other things going on in my life that I know is sin and wrong and all that. So but at the same time, I'm trying to get married. I'm trying to get out of fornication. It's easier to keep her than than uh get rid of her at this point in time. So I'm like, you know what I mean? So I didn't, I didn't trust her. So if, if, if I don't trust you, I trust is one of the most precious, rare things. When you know you can trust somebody, that's going to make you have feelings for them. If you know you can't trust somebody, how are you going to have feelings for somebody who you don't trust? Like it, me as a man, uh, you know, I like trust and feelings go together. I can't have real, real feelings for no female. I don't trust. I love you, but I could never be in love with you. You know what I mean? I could never be in love with you if I don't trust you. You know what I mean? I, I'm always on my guard to a certain point because you ain't showed me that I can let my guard down. You know what I mean? So, but, uh, but you know, I'm really trying to get married though. You know, I'm trying to get up out of fornication and the, the pastor, uh, to me, I felt like the pastor was playing games. He moving slow. And I left the church and broke up with the chick at the same time. You know what I mean? And and then the pastor might have probably knew that she wasn't my God appointed, God approved wife. But he didn't say nothing. You know, I respect honesty. Don't play with me. Say what you got to say. If that's your opinion. Now, I might have left the church then. Well, OK, if you ain't going to marry us, then I get somebody else to marry. Us. I might have left the church anyway, just because he didn't agree with me. With the decision I was trying to make, I might have left the church then, but I would have had more respect for him. You know, he spoke his mind. He stood on business. He felt like that wasn't the woman for me. So he said, I didn't want to have nothing to do with that marriage. I can't counsel you. I can't marry you. I just feel in my spirit that she's not the one that God has for you. I couldn't do nothing but respect it if he stood on business. I still might have left the church, though, because when you focused on doing something, you're going to do it. Whether whether I whether you marry me or whether somebody else marry us, you know what I mean. So I might I might have left the church anyway, but I would have had to respect them though. But when people just be playing games and we trying to get marriage counseling and and the person just slow poking around, so I end up leaving the church. You know I felt like he was playing games, but but like I said, uh, her dishonesty came back around again. She was doing some weird caught her in a lie. So I, I, I left the church and broke up with her at the same time, but I ended up getting back with her later. And uh, but we still didn't get married, though. Something. Well, nothing else happened, but uh, I wanted to get married at a certain time and get the license. She wasn't ready. So I just, hey, I'm through, you know, so that's how that went. But uh, but the point is, I was basically just we need to go and get married so we can deal with this fornication. But but you don't even know. That, that if you if you ain't walking in the power or if you don't have that commitment to be fully committed to Christ, you not walking in that power or you don't have that level of commitment as a single person, then marriage probably not going to work out because being married ain't no easier than being single and being being married as a Christian ain't no easier than living single as a Christian. That's the point that I'm that I'm making. Marriage is not easy. That's why I'm going through this to say it's possible. 
But you really got to be in Christ to make that marriage work, just like you really got to be in Christ to live a successful single life. This is what God gave me. He gave me this on Saturday. I said, wow, okay. Okay, early Saturday morning, he just started uh, giving it to me. Okay, now the third point. The first thing why marriage ain't easy is because you got to constantly have a respectful, reverential attitude towards your spouse. Constantly have an attitude seeking to please your spouse, uh, having their best interest in mind, wanting the best for them and not just for yourself. You know, what I mean, Ephesians five get to talking about that. Uh, I can't believe I didn't have that in my notes. Yeah, but Ephesians, oh yeah, I did have it in my notes. Ephesians 5, talk about that. Okay, the second thing why marriage ain't easy, you got to be on one accord, you got to be in agreement, and if you're not in agreement, you got to be able to negotiate, talk, speak your mind, your spouse speak her mind, and y'all got to be able to come to an agreement. So marriage, you got to be in agreement, you got to be able to come to an agreement, you got to be on one accord. The third reason why marriage ain't just easy breezy is you have to be able to forgive one another and get past it. You got to be able to, when, when, when one person done offended the other, and hopefully you're not going to offend your spouse on purpose, hopefully, but even when you're not trying to offend a person just the way men and women operate just the way one person operates from another person you could do something or not do something or say something or not say something and you can offend your spouse unknowingly or unintentionally now hopefully you're not offending your spouse intentionally but you can even when you don't do it intentionally, you can still offend the person unintentionally. So if that happens, <clears throat> you have to, the other person had to be able to, uh, the other person had to be able to forgive the person, not just forgive. You know how we, I forgive, but I don't forget. You had to be able to forgive and get past it to where it's like it didn't happen no more. Now, that ain't easy. Now, it's a lot easier to do when you know a person didn't offend you intentionally. You know, it's a lot easier when you know a person didn't offend you intentionally. You know what I mean? But yeah, but check this out. Now, remember the first point, having an attitude, a state of mind of reverencing, respecting, and pleasing your spouse. Now, if you got that kind of state of mind, then offending your spouse will be kept to a minimum. That, that's going to be a minimum. It's going to be kept to a minimum when you operating in love and respect and you got an attitude of pleasing your spouse and you reverencing and respecting your spouse, loving your spouse. When you got that attitude of love and respect, then offending one another is going to be kept to a minimum. You know what I mean? But it can still happen. You could do something intentionally or just do something. I don't care if she got mad or the woman can do something. I don't care if he get mad. That's almost intentional. You know what I mean? But but even unintentional, it can still happen. But when it does happen, if it happens, you got to be able to forgive and you got to be able to get past it. Luke 17, three and four. Where he's saying, if my brother offend, me. oh yeah, and I got a lot of scriptures that you can apply to marriage. The context might not be marriage, but it applies to marriage. Luke 17, 3 and 4. If my brother offend me, however many a times in a day, uh, if he if he come to thee and repent, you forgive him. But but the thing is, even if they don't come to you and repent, you gotta forgive them. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm telling you, man, that, that marriage thing is not it's not just something on the other side that's easy, man. It's just like it take work to be single and be abstinent. It take work for marriage, man. Because I'm telling you, uh, Matthew 18, 5 through 17, if your brother 
what would he say? If your brother offend you, you go to him. And then hopefully they can apologize or whatever. Y'all work it out. Then if 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 he don't, then you got to bring two or three witnesses with you. And hopefully you shouldn't have to do that in marriage. Hopefully you should be able to go to your spouse. I had a problem with this. Hopefully they apologize. Y'all work it out and get past it. But sometimes you might have to bring another person out the mouth for two or three witnesses. Then it said if they still don't don't want to uh, repent or acknowledge they wrong or apologize, then you take them to the church. You know, all that, that you know, if you got to do all that, then that marriage is probably already on the rocks. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you got to take them in front of the church, then he said if they still don't respond, don't repent, then you treat them like a tax collector or, uh, or uh, a heathen. But uh, these is just reconciliation with people, but it's the same in marriage. I anything come between any type of offense, you got to be able to reconcile. You know what I mean? Any type of offense, you got to be able to reconcile quickly. I think I used that scripture too. He said, agree with thy adversary quickly. But before that, Matthew 5, 23 through 25, he said, uh, if you know somebody got a fault against you, you go to that person and leave your gift at the altar. So husband and a wife, you know, you done made your wife mad. You don't just go on with life like normal. Nah, you go to her and get that right. You go to her and get that thing right and reconcile. Don't just go on with your normal business. Go get that thing right and reconcile and then get back to that business. See, this ain't even about marriage, but it can be applied to marriage. Then Ephesians 4, 26 and 27, don't let the sun go. Be angry and sin not. You might get mad, but watch what you say. Watch what you do. You know what I mean? And don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't let that thing fester up in you become a root of bitterness, huh? springing up among you, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. You know what I'm saying? Don't let that thing turn into a grudge. Don't let it turn into a root of bitterness. You know, get it off your chest. Go to the person. Talk it out. Reconcile. And if, if you can't do those things, then the marriage already in trouble. And the, the whole point of all this is that marriage is not no walk in the park, man. James 5, 9, it said, uh, grudge not one against another. You know, you husband and wives can have a grudge. You married to a person, but you got a grudge against that person. Unforgiveness, bitterness. So all that, man, you really got to be in Christ to make that marriage thing work. You got to have your personal relationship with Christ. It got to be strong and y'all need the fellowship, uh, and y'all need the fellowship together. Spend time in the in the Word together. Spend time in prayer together. And I love how uh, I love I love how uh uh, I'm just gonna say bamboo, bamboo and his wife. I love how they minister together. But that's what you got to do. You got to have your personal relationship with God. It got to be strong. And y'all need to have fellowship together in the Lord. Prayer together, in the word together, minister together. If you if you in ministry. You know, what I mean, uh, marriage is not no easy, breezy escape from fornication. Please do not ever think that. That's what God gave me. He gave it to me heavy. Just like, nah, it ain't what you think it is. My marriage, marriage takes just as much work on, for, on both people. See, when you single, you, you it's, just, it's all about you putting in the work to live a successful single life. But when it comes to marriage, you got to put the work in and your spouse got to put the work in. And a lot of the work y'all put in is together in Christ to have a blessed marriage. Ain't nothing easy about no blessed marriage. Just like ain't nothing easy about being single and not getting caught up in lust and masturbation and fornication. Ain't nothing easy about that. Ain't nothing easy about having a blessed, godly marriage. Ain't nothing easy about that. It's a lot of work in the Holy Ghost that you got to put in and put in as a couple and as individuals. 
ain't nothing easy about that. That ain't no easy escape from fornication, man, or lust or none of that. Not to mention temptations that'll come at you that the devil is send at you trying to put a wedge in that thing. You know what I mean? It's very real, man. Don't think marriage is not no easy escape. 